Yo guys, I'm Yellow, the Norwegian hardcore PC gamer, and now we are back with uh, part 2 of uh, how to play Nuke, basically. This is uh, the long video where I go through the major match, E-League Major, in Atlanta, if you haven't heard. Uh, this is Astralis between Virtus Pro, and the general gists of this match is that you'll see that Virtus Pro, they will be able to get done a lot of stuff that is, in general, better than what Astralis is doing. Now, I'm going to give a lot of spoilers now, so you better tune out from this entire video if you're not interested in that, but um, fun fact, Astralis and Virtus Pro uh, met themselves at the Dreamhack uh, event, a uh, pretty big event, pr uh, a lot of viewers in general on that event, and they met on the same map here, essentially all the three maps that they chose when they met were uh, th the same. However, the difference when they played on uh, Nuke right here was that the, the people, they actually, uh, the, the teams, when they faced each other, they were on the opposite sides of, um, of uh, the maps. Uh, which means that Virtus Pro, they started on CT side, and Astralis started on the opposite side. Now, I'm going to assume that Virtus Pro is very dedicated in studying their opponent, so that basically ended with uh, Virtus Pro body bagging. Uh, Astralis the second round up, but in this match everything will be way more distorted, uh, distor distorted as you would say, a lot more messy. So let's uh, do a little bit of a fast forward here and get into the actual action so we can see what is happening. Because thus far they're just standing around, not doing jack shit. Affirmative. <laughs> yeah, they're even answering on my behalf. Yeah, ready. This should start in a very short amount of time right now. So this is just a pistol round, um, a lot of stuff can be decided based upon the pistol round, doesn't mean, need to mean that it will be the case, but anyways, now we are starting here. And how you want to play these pistol rounds in general will be, um, it will be uh, as in like, alright, uh, I've talked about this a lot in the previous uh, episode and, and such things, or the previous video regarding this very match. But uh, yeah, CT side, they in general want to get a little bit of information. They have to defend as naturally you would. However, you can see that um, Virtus Pro, they're taking more important control uh, spots in general. Now, Snacks here is making sort of a mistake, and I think that this might be one of the minor gambles that um, the Virtus Pro were doing in this very, uh, very round. Because you can see Shadow here, he's. Uh, running uh, up here on mini in the yard and one of the cool things with Neo's position is that he's actually holding the heaven area and hell at the same time hell in order to back up Pasha in yard uh, now I meant to say ramp which is kind of difficult but the terrorist here because of how he is holding ramp and he's scared of ramp instead of the yard he does not get to just kill Chadby here outright uh, which is not really what you wanna wanna have happen to you right so, yeah, here the fights are commencing, and um, you know what, they're trying to pick up the pieces, and you know what, that's all, all completely good and fair. From this point onwards, it seemed to be a very, very, very fair match, and things are balancing out a bit because of each team's individual skills. As Cifix here hits a couple of crazy shots, and uh, the, the, the rounds seem to be doomed for Virtus Pro at this point. But you know what, that kind of half gamble in not being at heaven so that you spot the guy killing your teammate in yard and essentially giving uh, Astralis an entire one-man lead that round uh, so that they could be able to snow snowball that into an easy victory, that can make all the difference. However, you can't really know that because it all depended on how ballsy Astralis is going to play T-side. Now, it's good on them though to utilize some of the new... Uh, I guess you could say um, uh, paths and opportunities that you now get as T side on this map. However, um, I think uh, still think that if uh, if um, Virtus Pro play it a little bit more disciplined, in which they will do in the future, you will be able to get way more work done. As Snacks there get quickly killed in the start of this round, and so his uh, little uh, rushy approach there didn't really pan out as he wanted it to. Cool things about this map though is that if uh, T side or CT side don't play things properly as I mentioned in the previous video You're going to get annihilated by pistols and up close weapons in general as effects there If somebody were camping a, an off angle there he would have gotten dinked in the face straight off So I mean if you play stuff properly here You'll be able to get so much more mileage out of your weapons and hopefully Teams will in the future try and utilize this as much as possible <laughs> as uh, both the pl players here are basically eyeing themselves out That's kind of cool to see. It's cool to see that the, the observer when uh, this was uh, airing on uh, On the E-League Major live he actually spotted that and he was like Meh, man I'm gonna toggle to the door and around to, to the other side of the door. That's kind of cool stuff 
So right now, you can see that Virtus Pro is just trying to inch out kills. Bialy killed Syphex, so that's pretty good, but uh, it's not going to be anything that will be a severe game changer. The only thing that is really worth mentioning is that saving a Deagle, a Scout, and a CC with head armor is actually really good uh, on this version of the map. It's not, however, the Holy Grail, but if you're going to go for yet another save, if you want to, you don't really have to buy that much. You, you could give away the CC or the Deagle and buy yourself a P250 and suddenly you have a full setup for a small buy. However, it looks like Bialy and Snacks are going for some more uh, delicate weapons. Similar similar to what I, I stated anyways, and Snacks want the Deagle, it seems, so go for it if you really feel like you're going to, gonna hit, hit those uh, lovely one-tap Juan Deags. Uh, so yeah, here we go again, and um, Astralis are very fierce this round, they're all going together, only one real flash brain being staged by Syphex, and that's really good. Hitting the A side in a very blunt manner, and that can bite you in the ass if everybody are stacking the site, and you can, as you can see, that actually did happen. Three men lost on the terrace side, and that is gonna be the, uh, the, the part of the economy that you're going to miss in the longer run. And that's also because of how... Virtus Pro in general want most people, especially on eco rounds, to just be close to each other and preferably on one site. And the quickest to go get to site will be A, obviously. So that's kind of why that is almost every single time. If Astralis decide to go for something quick, like by by, by the handbook of how you should most likely play this map. If you then face everybody on A, you're most likely going to lose a lot of people, right? And that's going to hurt your economy. And that's aside from the pistols having the most opportunity thus on A, aside from the team, the, the teammates uh, being there and getting the return frags and all that sort of stuff. The, the basic stuff that you have to do every, at every single moment in time. So I'm not really surprised. And I think that that was a bad decision by Astralis, despite winning with two men alive. But then again, a win is a win. And if you know that you can abuse your own uh, power of return fragging, aside from... Uh, how you're facing your opponents, go for it. If you really want to go for it, go for it. Now, I also want to say that if the pr approach of Astralis was a bit more systematic with grenades to maybe uh, crank out some of the most annoying positions, uh, a very interesting position being this very small event cubby area right here on A, if they clean that out, everything might have been a little bit different, aside from having maybe one more uh, angled, sharp flashbang going a little bit higher, then again, then you're sacrificing an entire teammate uh, in order to get those, uh, uh, get that little flashbang hit uh, through the, the skylight so that, uh, you, you know, your teammates can get work done. But despite that, shit happens. And now we can see that Neo here, I think he ate a grenade earlier, but he still went for a late greedy peek. Very uh, well-timed and uh, kind of kind of greedy, but it's kind of fun that he uh, was able to kill one out of two people looking uh, in the wrong direction. So that's uh, the classic, uh, classical uh, little uh, timing play there. Uh, Bialy here, he's standing in the position I talked about, and he now just cut the head off two people trying to enter. Uh, which is kind of why that position... In the future, it almost systematically have to be countered. <laughs> Syphix is like, oh god, he almost hit me down to uh, 10 HP. That, that was uh, scary for him, I'm pretty sure. So now he's just trying to stay alive, but I know that there's no way in hell he's going to be able to have an easy time. So I think he here half-heartedly wanted to go for extra kills, but uh, the discipline of Virtus Pro is supreme in this scenario. And here you can hear them, but uh, that didn't really pan out the way he wanted to. So now there's going to be a timeout, and I think um, both sides will get some opportunity here to go through information. But since this is a uh, timeout by Astralis, they might try now and calibrate and retune themselves towards what Virtus Pro is doing and how they are going to try and break the defense. However, the issue here is that I don't honestly don't think that Astralis is practicing this map that much anymore. They might only have like one basic shallow plan on how to play this map, and with their collective skill, this works pretty well. And that you know what? That's fair. That's exactly what you should do when you don't really have that much experience or extensive knowledge and experience. Of, of a map, but despite this, yeah, Shadow be here, here able to get a very sneaky kill because of that same mistake that uh, Virtus Pro did earlier on the pistol round. But despite what I just said, fact is that you also got to have a backup plan and you got to have even more plans in stock if you really want to get the most mileage out of this map. Because if you keep the two biggest choke points of this map and you dominate those and you frequently get the information, yes, you have to have some sort of educated read on your enemy, but aside from that, I think that if you just get that sort of stuff done, you are going to have a great time on this map. And yes, you have to spread yourself a little bit thin on ramp every now and then and on the heaven slash hell area every now and then in order to get the information that you, uh, you need. But if you play ramp properly and if you 
also play Yard properly. As Pasha might still trying to get a little bit of a flank going, but that didn't pan out because of the A1's accuracy. Uh, the A4's accuracy, I meant to say. Yeah, th despite that, yeah, th th the thing is that, you know what, you can still get serious work done here on the map just by playing it almost, almost as you, if what you, uh, you were doing was what you did in the past. Um, now, the cool thing I would say is that the biggest contrast of this map, and if you want to try and get the same place done on this version of the map versus the previous one, is that you had to invest more people in Yard in order to get onto the catwalk, because you could do that with, like, one extra man, basically. Um... And also you needed to have some strafing and an actual bunny hop or, or technical strafing skill per se. Uh, in order to get on the little uh, nipple in the yard as I like to call it. The, the big little thing that now doesn't exist anymore. Which is why you can just walk around this little area right here. But that being said, now you don't really have to do that. So I guess if you go for a little bit more of a teammate oriented play. And you know exactly what uh, the enemies are doing. You should be able to get some serious work done. But it doesn't really look like Astralis want to do this. Except for when they are going together. In, the, in which the only time they've really done that have been... I, I think they will do it once or a couple of times more in Yard. And it, it might be successful. But, but they also tried to do this on, on A. And, and you guys know that that might not be the best choice. And here they actually do a pretty good double trade here. And they're able to get some serious mileage done. Killing a lot of people. Two people left on the Astralis, and that's really the curse of uh, team play just wrecking you, and especially when you have good, well-timed, well-synchronized team play. Just absolutely annihilates Astralis, even waiting for them. Very scary stuff, but that is uh, the price you pay of getting up close against pistols in this game, and especially when you're facing multiple people. Now, the coolest part is that I think you can honestly, if you have the skill, if one teammate... He's like, you know what, fuck it, I'm, may maybe he's hurt, maybe he wants you to get that single kill, maybe you have the info that is there only, uh, there's only one enemy there. If he consciously goes for a bait uh, peak, a very, very wide peak, he's going for the widest peak, the absolutely most wide peak, I think you can effectively trade a lot of times, even against very strong opponents, uh, yourself and your teammate. And on an eco round, you know, that that's basically what you want to get done every time, right? So that kind of screws up the plans of... Um, of um, of Astralis here, but they're still in this to win it. This uh, one versus two, smoking off a key position, making sure that he will stay alive a little bit longer. There he th failed a uh, molly in the smoke. I think that's actually kind of detrimental. And here he did spot Taz. Uh, almost had the chance to kill him there, but Taz was just way too quick with a jump and stuff. So that kind of screwed uh, the day over for Astralis. But that was a pretty important round for the Virtus Pro to win. Um, it might have converted itself into two rounds in the longer run. So in general, it's just pretty good skill and uh, and smart play done from them, abusing pistols and being able to snowball that into an, an AVP even, which is even more lucky, I would say, in the long run. Um, and winning the round, aside from, you know, basically spending no money and getting 5,400, uh, no, 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 it's 4,750 dollars, there we go, back in an op, which you don't have to buy, and suddenly you can see that the money on, uh, on, uh, Virtus Pro here is all up, it, it's, it's stacked, and, uh, Astralis again, don't really have the best nades, and this is why you really want to make sure that the mileage of every single grenade you have, it goes all the length, the entire length. If not, any, and if you don't play it properly with the team game and the plan of the map in general, aside from what the t enemies are doing, you're not gonna have a good time. So now, this time, you can see that the the Astrali side here is going to Yard with Glaive in the lead. He's in general doing a lot of good work here, and I think that he should keep that up. But um, for this map, it's not gonna be enough. And for the next time they play, holy shit, it's a completely different game. But the cool thing here, and this I talked about earlier, is that Bialy now is holding one of the oddball key points. And this one is seriously the, the one of the the points that you really want to dominate and you want to have a good um, good lead in if you want to make it so that you are going to have an easy time and not get wrecked by one of the better sites that you have in this map, which I would claim to be the B site a lot of times. You can you could in this game see that Virtus Pro went there very frequently, and they were having a lot of success. Now in this round, you can see that Astralis is being very hesitant, especially in this round. Bialy here meeting somebody in, the, like, there's basically 45 seconds left of the round, and then he meets one enemy. It's absolutely insanity. Oh man, Neo, they're getting hit pretty well by the UMP. It barely hits him, though, it feels like. Uh, uh, the the drop-off in long range for the UMP, it's, like, not that high, but it's still pretty high. 
But anyways, yeah, what, what I was gonna say is that, yeah, this round really fell, fell apart because they didn't really play uh, with the confidence that they were supposed to have, but that was only in this round, though, by Astralis. So if they were to tune something here, for example, and not spread themselves out so thin they could even individually get picked off by, um, by Virtus Pro, I honestly think that they might have had a good fighting chance on B. I don't really know why they didn't commit to kill Bialy, maybe with one well-placed nade. I mean, they did chuck down the Molotov. So if they were to go, f for example, after the Molotov and, and play with it, they could have get serious work done. But they, they just didn't. Exactly why? It's kind of hard for us to tell. You almost got to be inside the head of Astralis, maybe Glaive even, for all we know, in order to figure that out. But that being said... Seriously, if they just had done something there as a team game, they might have been able to win that round. Uh, but they didn't, so what can you really do? So now we are on a new round here, and this is a very patchy force buy, I think. Let's take a little bit of a look at the money. Yeah, this is actually one of the worst force buys I've seen in some time by Astralis. But I mean, it's Nuke after all, so what do you know? Maybe it will work out, maybe it won't. Now, Pasha here have a lot of information about what is going on in ramp, and this means that you can actually spread your enemies a bit more thin, because if you then have your CT guy on Heaven instead of Hell, he will now be able to seal off Yard. And here you can see in number 5, your boy number 5, that will be here again. He's actually sneaking up, and he's now being trying to get him killed by Snacks, holding very, very devious angles. But here Glavis gets kills at the floor area, but now suddenly you have two guys quickly wrapping here at ramp, and this is exactly what you need if you want to try and make it um, to the B site. I think that this play in general is pretty good, because you can see that now, uh, one entire CT actually got uh, pulled away from ramp, but that will give you the clearance to uh, ramp as a terrorist side, just quickly getting into the face of Virtus Pro. Now, let's say that uh, Pasha Biceps had been able to get the information that he needed. If that was the case, uh, you know what? Everything could have been different here in the in the later round, but uh, didn't happen. So what can he really do? He's still got a good position, and they're still facing enemies uh, with uh, not the worst weaponry and not the worst grenades. So taking the time, being patient, using them smartly like this, and he also killing people with that uh, long range weapon, uh, you'll get work done for sure. So now it's a 2v2 situation, and I gotta say that Astralis actually made this round work out pretty well, despite it not seeming coordinated whatsoever. Near here, trying his very best. Will it be enough? With that grenade? Almost, but not nearly enough. They were able to inch it out, but I, honestly, I think that if you play around out, out like this, not only are you, uh, it, it, like, what is the word I'm looking for? It almost feels like you're 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 making the the smart play happen, but it was not intentional at all. So you're like, man, fuck it, we're gonna run with it. You can't really rely on that in the long run. I mean, if you can somehow do it reliably, which almost never happens really in CS:GO, but when it does, it's amazing. Go go ahead. You know, you're gonna fuck up the enemy every single time. But at that point, it doesn't feel like the meta game is stable, and it feels like. Even both teams can learn a lot more about how to play the map. So, yes, go for it. And if you can, dude, just run for, run with it. It's even more exciting to watch. Uh, believe me, I watch a lot of CS, more than most people. But, uh, yeah, it, it, for real, you can't rely on that. So, it's going to be cool to see what will happen in the coming rounds. And now, let's see when this uh, timeout will end. There we go. I think it was a quick little vote. Don't even remember properly. And now we got a very similar situation to what we had before. However, ramp is being played a bit differently. And with the extra information happening, I honestly think that uh, the people around don't really mind too much. They're maybe more scared of a fake than anything. And it's a kind of an interesting approach by Astralis too. Because they don't really seem to be um, too interested in like actually going with all the nades and whatnot. Then again, they did cut up, get cut off a bit, and let's not forget that Virtus Pro will have easy access to A, now panning, or not panning, uh, running away from A. So, if they suddenly now, for example, were to rush in to the A site, and maybe they even have a person uh, keeping yarn in check, they will be able to actually get stuff done. But will they commit to A, or will they just go to ramp? Either way, it might turn into becoming a disaster because the positions of Virtus Pro now are actually really good. Lucifix here going for a little bit of a play. Glaive finding himself a lovely kill in the art, I'm gonna presume. So now suddenly they're very interested in doing a pincer move to A. And that Molotov, that's actually really good. That staggers uh, the two yard players and the deep yard play here is also gonna be interesting. But Taz actually killing two people makes everything working out a little bit more in the favor of Virtus Pro. And also with that Prasha Biceps kill. 
the A4 actually hitting something this time, it's suddenly even, and that is not a good um, a good uh, place to be in for Astralis, but you know what? They're gonna take this and run it straight to the bank. Oh no, <laughs> Pasha just got wrecked there. Uh, that's one of the curses of going up that ladder. You don't really get to see something, and it almost feels like people can always kill you. And you know what? I think that that is pretty fair to state. Why? Asclave here gets himself a lovely 4k, slowly but surely churning out whatever kind of possibility the enemies have. Yeah, the reason is that when you are going up the ladder, uh, you can literally not shoot anything unless it's very close. And your enemy can stand wherever, and where you're coming up will be basically telegraphed, so your head will almost always get wrecked. But that was actually an, an yet another one of those rounds that I feel like, you know what? Um, it was a little bit too close, and uh, honestly, if Virtus Pro had a little bit more discipline in there and not angling their teammates to being too at ramp here, as they're doing currently here, entering with nades and just making sure that if they're pushing there, nothing is gonna, bad is gonna happen. You know what, in that scenario, Yes, if they go ramp, it's gonna be fine. But you know what? They did go A, and that's kind of ballsy, you know? So, um, I, th I think that uh, Astralis there, not only did they go for a risky play, but they out bold uh, out Does that make any sense? I don't think it does, but you get my point, right? They, they just were a little bit too ballsy. They, they went for a risk play, and it actually paid off, and that's pretty good. Taz here getting a couple of kills. And then the third one. I honestly think that we might want to go back and take a look at that one, because it's pretty good to see that one um, as it happens. So let's take a pause here. Now the issue here is that um, not only do I have to pause it, but I then gotta go back one round, and then I gotta, gotta go back another one, I think. No, 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 I just wanna restart the round, that's how it goes, so it should be fine. Um, it's kinda laggy. I don't understand this, and I might as well talk about it while we're waiting. Going backwards with a demo uh, system here is so slow, I have no idea why. And it would be cool to, to know why, but I don't know. So it's kind of like, why is that a thing, Valve? Can you can you fix up that sort of stuff? And maybe also the demo replay delay with the smokes and shit. It looks dodgy as fuck, so please. So this time... Okay, that feels kind of laggy. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you can see this. Okay, so now we've been able to activate the, the bug there as well. But it's basically tasks that you want to look at on in this round. But now you can also see the, this delay here. The, it, everything feels jittery. I'm literally having 100 FPS recording here. I don't really understand why that is even happening, but whatever. Um, okay, now it was undelayed. Yeah, here we go. Now it's smooth again. I don't understand. Valve, really? These bugs are even happening here? You gotta take a look at that. Fix it. And in the same way, take a look at this. Taz here getting that lovely triple kill. This is exactly what uh, Astralis don't need, because that's absolutely disgusting. And what I love is that Virtus Pro show no respect at all, and they just go in with USPs, making the enemies distorted, dis uh, just absolutely bamboozle them and wreck their lives, and then a CC player comes in and cleans up with all those bullets, quick shooting, headshots even, which are very lucky to hit with a CC. And you know what? Ah, uh, man. I, like, Virtus Pro deserved that round because of how ballsy they were, and they, they just show no respect. I, I love it. Then again, I mean, pistols are fucking crazy in this game. So, Astralis, really, they ran into that one. N nothing but them to blame. Yet another round, yet another attempt by both sides to make the best of it, and uh, Virtus Pro stacked up with gear. But uh, Astralis did invest some. I think that's very common nowadays. Uh, Astralis, or actually any any side of any good team, they almost always try and buy uh, something in order to get something done. Now, if you are then playing and you're a casual player, maybe you're just playing matchmaking, maybe you're just a casual, I don't know, Master Guardian, Global, Lem, whatever, really, most people in that bit of game will do it as well. But the difference, I think, between a pro team and people of the higher, higher levels, or just a high level of matchmaking, I was gonna say, that sentence doesn't really make it, uh, doesn't serve matchmaking justice. As Bialy here almost gets a triple, but then dies regardless. And then the rounds quickly clean up. Very cheeky play, but it didn't really pan out the way Astralis wanted to. But yeah, what I was gonna say is it's good to have a plan with your weaponry. But you also gotta understand that a lot of the weapons that you buy on an eco round, unless you're really good, it will be wasted. And there's a very high chance for you to lose the round anyways, and so unless you have a mid-tier to a very good economy anyways, and you're on an eco round, which sounds kind of weird, but I mean, I'm just talking about like the difference of maybe 800 to 1,200 bucks or something like that. Um, 
what you can do is that you can only buy maybe two weapons and then use your teammates as bait because chance is that, chance is that you're most likely not going to get shit done anyways but if you then all go together in a decent bunch and you're playing it systematic you're playing it with baiting shoulder baiting uh and whatnot you're still going to get a lot of the mileage out of those weapons and at best maybe the enemies aren't that good at responding maybe you're catching one enemy off off guard long range uh, or not long range I meant to say, the spacing between the enemies, maybe it's not as tight as they want it to be. You know what happens then, ladies and gents? It means that suddenly you have a pistol user and a good weapon. And suddenly that dude that had nothing will have a weapon. And so if that pans out, go for it. Or if you're lucky enough, rather. Because that doesn't really happen as frequently. Um, as uh, Astralis here, they're only very raw by. And, and there's not too much to say about this round other than that, you know what? I honestly think that Astralis would have won this if they had more gear. But you know what they don't have this round? Gear. <laughs> they, they don't have the nades. They don't have the smokes. They don't have the flashbangs that they truly had to, to patch uh, uh, Virtus Pro out of with this round or, and in this round. And Glaive here now going for a very cheeky little flank attempt. Not getting anything from uh, Virtus Pro. But honestly, that's like a very, very big game changer. So it feels like Astralis here, they went for the right play, but they didn't uh, fulfill the play properly. It's almost as if they went for a cheap... Uh, be execute attempt and that's not really gonna g get you anywhere uh, especially especially when you're facing a team like Virtus Pro they really play with the highest level of discipline and here I don't know what Astralis or what Glaive thought with the bomb there must have been a fluke accidentally stopping uh, holding in the bomb planting button fa too fast or whatever it's, it's kind of hard to tell we, as I said earlier, you literally, in some cases, have to be inside of the head of some of these players to understand exactly what they intended, what happened, what mistake happened, and then you can progress from that. So, really, it's on the people themselves to try and figure out what is better. We can just make an estimated judge judgment of what happened, though. So, I mean, we are not completely lost in that sense, but anyways, it's worth mentioning. So now there's only one round left, really, and you can see that their economy here on T side, uh, regardless of what you would assume, this is not good. This is not really going to get you that far, even if you're doing your very best. And honestly, I don't really know what play would be the better here. Um, because of the range and stuff, if you patch, patch off the range and maybe add a couple of flashbangs to it, maybe you could be able to get quickly to ramp. But then you're gonna get be faced uh, with people quickly on, uh, on B side, most likely, anyways. So... It's kind of hard to hard to make a good judgment of this buy from Astralis if we are, for example, going to make it work. No, take note of the five Molotovs on <laughs> on Virtus Pro as well, and they have stacked out weapons. Maybe it's, except for Pasha, because the A4 can be a fucking asshole of a weapon in in long long range situations. But it won't matter when you compare them to Tech Nines and whatnot. And so here you can see that, uh, like this, honestly, this play, I, or yeah, th this play on this map. I find to be kind of questionable, because what the hell are you going to do with Tech Nice long range? Unless you're all able to get to A here, which in which Dupree actually wrecks Bialy, so that's pretty good. Like, unless you're able to get close, you're not really going to get shit done. And here you can see that Virtus Pro, they're just taking every single gunfight as good as they can, except for Bisa... Uh, Bisa? 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 What the fuck? <laughs> don't, don't write comments about what I said there, alright? That was a mis misspeaking. Pasha Biceps. He actually got wrecked with A4, and that's not good, but then again, I mean, what, what are you expecting when you're taking that much of a ballsy peak? Then again, the disrespect factor can be useful. It wasn't that round for him, though, but still. And now you're in a 2v2 situation, and I mean, it could technically go to versus Pro, and you know what? Maybe it will. But honestly, like, you have to be in that quick situation, that, that quick snappy close-up situation to make things work out. And this, while it did almost work, um, it didn't really work out in the, <laughs> the, the end. Just Virtus Pro too good to uh, to sneak in the long run. And you know what? Good effort in Astralis, but sadly this d doesn't really look like it will go all the mileage. And aside from that, the next time they met, Astralis got absolutely pummeled. So anyways, hopefully you guys in guys enjoy these two videos. Um, go figure, there was a lot less of go figure. I actually took, took note of that as, as I was recording, but I was like, fuck it. So anyways, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to support me, I would recommend you take a look at the Patreon page. It's completely newly revamped. So there is that. Here are also two related videos if you want to get smarter at playing Nuke or at playing CSGO in general. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and don't get beastified when you play.